When presented with food, a cat will check if it's fresh, if it's organic, gluten-free, with the correct texture, temperature, and if it's been prepared properly. A dog eats the food and the napkin. Good morning, sweet world, and welcome to the No Dunks Podcast on the Athletic Network, a fine network. It's Monday, April 15th, 2024. I'm J.E. Skeets here in the Classic Factory, and alongside me, as always, Task Mellis. Podcast listeners, basketball lovers, this is for you! Next to him, it's the bearded one, Matasha Hot Boy, Trey Kirby. Hey yo! Hey yo! And last but not least, over yonder, just over there, making the magic happen, super producer JD. Hello. There he is. Here we are. Shout out to the stream team joining us live right now on YouTube. We love to see it. Hit the like button, subscribe, podcast listeners, five-star ratings and reviews. We got a whole lot to break down here. We'll look ahead to the play-in games. (laughs) We've got a fun tweet of the night, obviously setting up some of the playoff matchups and talking about the weekend. But, 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 but before all that. We had two wedgies on the final day of the regular season, and they were big ones because we had Gary Trent Jr. sticking number 57 in Miami on a three-point attempt. And then this one from Mason Plumley in L.A. had the crowd going bonkers for number 58. That's important because that ties the all-time record for wedgies in a season. Yes, we count the playoffs we count the playing games so those will matter uh one more and we set the all-time record so we're gonna do it i think we're hitting 60 plus and what a way to end tassie we are absolutely gonna set a record for wedgies in the modern day era that's what we like to call it here because we've had <laughs> now 58 wedgies in three of the last four seasons wedgies, wedgies are just up mm. because when we first started counting them we're sitting at nba tv we're excited just to watch wedgies on our tv we watched games we said you know we should count these there are far fewer numbers were way down first six years that we counted them just one over 50 and now they're just coming like bunches right now that's so true a lot of shots coming out that last three point land changes things yeah the last five wedgies have been three point attempts yeah uh this season uh even mason plumley well i know (laughs) he must wedgie a lot of three point shots in practice that looked 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 incredible and again the crowd popped i mean it was like a fun moment of the game he's really doing it yeah (laughs) they went nuts and then after that uh because of the jump ball with the wedgie we had six foot two clippers guard xavier moon he out jumped Boban for the jump all, and the crowd went even more crazy when that happened Special off of the wedgie. Moment. So, yes, one more. We set the all time record. Just incredible stuff. But let's get into the weekend because I want to know, guys. I just want to know the most surprising result from the final weekend of the NBA regular season to you. We can do winners and losers as well, but what was just <laughs> the most surprising result to you? To me, that OKC got the number one seed in the Western Conference because it was a three way tie going into the weekend. Nikola Jokic. Thought he would get it. Plays Victor Wembanyama, the Spurs. Well, yeah, we can beat them. But no, Wembanyama comes back for nothing. And then going into the last night, three-way tie. Nuggets win, but the Wolves lose to the Phoenix Suns. And then OKC wins, becoming the youngest team to win the number one seed in league history. That's what the stats say. Uh, so all 15 players scored in that game against Dallas. Well, who wasn't playing anybody? Uh, <laughs> that was but, a blowout. But that was just it was just a fun game for them. Again, the youngest team. They got their sideline reporter barking at the end of the <laughs> game in the post game interview. And yeah, Shay and Jalen sitting there at post game press conference with sunglasses. Mm-hmm. And they they're they're ready. I, I I just feel like this team is better than its age. I, I mentioned the age. I, I don't think that really matters. I just like to reference this team because I think we should just give them what they deserve. They got that one seed a long time ago with Durant in the Westbrook era. They did that once, and Beverly just dove into Westbrook's knee in, mm. the, in the playoffs, and that changed things. But just to give them a handshake. Hey, way to do this. <laughs> Good stuff for OKC to get the one seed because it didn't seem that way, especially with Shea missing two weeks late in the season. They were 2-4 and four in the games that he missed. Mm-hmm. So that kind of screwed them in terms of the record, and I thought it just wasn't going to happen. But how does Jokic lose to Wemby? Uh, it just didn't seem right. And that, then all of a sudden. That was a crazy result, that Friday night game where the Spurs came back huge against the Nuggets, where Wemby scored, what, 17 points in three minutes. Then we had Devontae Graham. 
People are like, mm-hmm. what? Devontae Graham is on the Spurs? <laughs> he hit a tough like little runner there in transition, and they, and they pulled out that victory, which was huge. I mean, it could have implications on the championship, Absolutely. that result with the Nuggets slipping and OKC being number one. We'll see, but uh, that's a good one. Do you have another surprising result from the weekend? I mean, that's definitely the most surprising one. Devontae Graham has a ridiculous game winner reel for a guy who's <laughs> like a second and third string point guard. He hit point. a bunch with the Hornets, obviously uh, hit this one with the Spurs, and then didn't he hit like a 60-foot shot? shot with the Pelicans last season a against the Thunder. One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People will literally forget that Devontae Graham is a bucket, or maybe they'll remember too much. I feel like that's mm. the thing with Devontae Graham. You always remember the hits. Mm-hmm. There are other games that have happened, like the previous 81 this season. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why I picked him over Kobe White. We once had a question. Devontae or Kobe White? I picked him. I picked Devontae <laughs> Graham, maybe because he, he is a bucket, but Kobe White's way better now. Yeah, that one aged poorly, I guess. I'll go with a surprising result from Sunday's games. The Cavaliers deciding they wanted nothing to do with Philly or Miami. Now, you may say that's the smart move, but them trying to out-tank the Hornets in the final game of the season was weird. Nick Smith Jr., season-high 24 points. He was the star for the Hornets as they rallied to beat the Cavaliers 120-110. Cavaliers didn't play their main guys. Okay, you're resting them. You don't want anybody to get injured. You understand that. But then in the fourth quarter, when they're up huge, they sat those guys. They went into the (laughs) ultimate reserves. And in the end, the Hornets come back. Amari Bailey was like hitting clutch shot after clutch shot. And they win this. And it was weird because now the Cavaliers finished fourth in the East. They'll have home court advantage, of course, but they play the Magic. But this is by design, I guess. They wanted nothing to do with that second seed or even the third seed having to play, again, potentially the Sixers or Heat if you're the second seed, the Pacers if you're that third seed, which the Bucks will now get. But they get the magic, and I'm not so sure they're going to even beat them. Be careful what you wish for, Skeets. Yeah, it's weird. Magic weird are game. seventh in offensive rebound rate this season. And what I happened? remember how, yeah. what, how what happened in the playoffs last year. That being said, I think you would rather play Orlando than potentially Philadelphia or Miami. So I understand what Cleveland was doing. But uh, if you listen to Tim Bontemps on the Hoop Collective today, this guy was heated oh. that the Cavs would tank away the end of the season like that. Shameful, cowardly stuff from Cleveland to go into the playoffs with a loser mentality. And I have to agree. Yeah, there was a lot of weird things in this final game for these two teams. Well, Clifford got his final win as the Charlotte Hornets head coach. <laughs> so ya. they sent him off uh, with a little thank you gift. Uh, Hornets ended the game on an 18 to 2 run. We had JT Thor going for a career high 20 points. I already mentioned Amari Bailey. He was a problem late. Uh, Max Struess had a triple double. Pete Nance? <laughs> yeah, that was the Shirt Brothers lineup for the Cavs. Pete Nance and Isaiah Mobley. <laughs> yeah, again, they leaned into it. So, Cavs magic, that one's set. Uh, you know, as this week goes on, we'll start doing our actual playoff previews and predictions, but you can lock in that one on NBA TV. Oh, uh, yeah. 100% oh, yeah. Cavs magic. Um, but I think, I mean, I'm looking at this one already going, I, I mean, yes, I get it. You maybe want to play the magic instead of Philly with Embiid, the zombie heat with Jimmy Butler, and we know what he can do in the postseason. He turns it up a notch. But then again, I mean, the magic, we saw what they did yesterday against the Bucks. They're going to be a little pissed. They're like, hey, you wanted us. You know, you got a little bulletin board material. But they have a defensive identity, and uh, it's whether or not they'll be able to score enough. They need Franz to get hot for uh, for a postseason run here. But I, I'm leaning towards the magic over Cleveland right now. I really am. Because Cleveland's also looked bad for, like, five weeks, six weeks. Well, that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah Donovan Mitchell just yeah. hasn't been himself. Yeah. And so they sit him in this game, and J.B. Vickerstaff said, we were going to sit them in the fourth quarter no matter what. We weren't throwing this game. So <laughs> that... That's up for debate. I think he could be absolutely telling the truth that they were okay throwing this game. When they were up big and in the fifth or fourth quarter, I should say, not the fifth quarter. It felt like the fifth quarter because it felt like it was No, that was the uh, Bulls-Knicks game. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was Tristan Thompson just getting the ball every single time in the fourth quarter. That was weird. Yeah, that's that's called tanking. <laughs> yeah, that's Mark Madsen mode. <laughs> so, come on, they could say they did or did. They, they did. They did. And, and maybe it'll work out for them, I guess. What, winning a first-round series and then having to play Boston in the second round is the weird part because people were pointing out, hey, if you're in the 2-3, at least you're on the other, opposite side yeah. of the, the bracket to you know the juggernaut maybe, Celtics. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe winning one series, will, will that be seen as like a successful year to this Cleveland Cavaliers team? Better than last year, of course, but small improvement. 
We'll see when we get into the actual series, but I don't know. Will the basketball cods <laughs> care at all about them? Tanking it away to the Hornets. Yeah, I guess we shall see. The Mavericks tanked away their season last year, and it worked out okay for them. So does it matter if it's in the playoffs? <laughs> Maybe so, because I guess Cleveland would have gotten up to three, which means they would have played Indiana. You know, I guess they got as good of a chance against the Pacers as they do against the Magic. Mm-hmm. Uh, though the Pacers have some more established guys. I would also throw um, a hilarious game into the mix here. The Bulls and the Knicks went to overtime for no reason. <laughs> like, they didn't have to play this game, <laughs> really, you know? The Knicks may not have wanted the second seed. Their fans certainly didn't. The Bulls have been locked into number nine since January. Yep. They had nothing to play for, but starters go for both of these teams, and then they play into overtime. Jalen Brunson goes for 40 points the 11th time this season. The Bulls play another clutch game. their 44th this season. Also, their 11th OT game this season, which is the most. And Dante DiVincenzo played 52 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the point of this? That's <laughs> this is ball. why the NBA did it, right? This is why they yeah. flexed them onto national TV. They're like, these idiots are going to play hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> true. They can't help it. That's true. They will <laughs> give it their all, despite the Bulls playing for absolutely nothing. At least the Knicks are playing for home court yeah. advantage and you can argue did they do the right thing yeah. they obviously have the number two seed so they'll have a couple series if they move on to us in Madison Square Garden where they have home court advantage there's no doubt about that but yeah that was a that was a fun <laughs> game and also DeRozan yeah. missing like game winners that he hits like 99 times out of 100 yeah. in any other game to give us more minutes or bonus basketball I think he's got Strange. a good cage for clutch player of the year regardless mm. but it would have been nice to end it oh. with a game winner on yeah. the last day of the season that yeah. moves you up into number nine where you've been <laughs> Brunson oh, Brunson almost had the game winner too yeah. and the uh, you know Caruso all over him but that thing nearly dropped and pinged out uh down in the corner there as he's falling out of bounds it was an entertaining game I mean did you like the NBA doing like all the Eastern Conference games starting at the same time and then all the Western Conference games starting at the time so you could you know you're doing a bunch of scoreboard watching but you really gotta go play your game if you want to like help your chances to move up. Got to play your game. Yeah. Got DeMar game. DeRozan led the league in minutes this year. I was surprised by that. 37.8 minutes. That's a lot of minutes. So he kept playing the Knicks. Play their game. <laughs> Tibbs is going to play their guys. Oh, they yeah. always play their guys. <laughs> Brunson always plays. And that team in particular has lots of days off here. Yeah. Because they yeah. are yeah. chilling. Another weird thing I just thought because divisions still do exist. Yep. And I often forget that. But Orlando, Indiana, and Philly all finished with 45 and 37 records. But Orlando wins a tiebreaker because they are a division winner. <laughs> what division do they play in? The Southeast. Yeah, the Southeast. <laughs> yeah, baby. Uh, we're the only ones that remember yeah. that. <laughs> east are easy. We're, we're in the East. It's the Western ones that are slightly more difficult. <laughs> totally agree. Uh, but anyway, they're hanging a banner. Okay, well, let's move to just biggest winner or loser uh, from the final weekend of the NBA regular season. Is there another team player incident? What do you got? I got the Pelicans because a couple weeks ago we were talking about the New Orleans Pelicans potentially playing for the four seed in the Western Conference. They look like it. They look like they could beat the Clippers up to that seed and then things just change drastically. Now, going into the weekend here, they look like they're playing for the six seed. They win on Sunday, they win the six seed. Yeah. And then they lost to the Los Angeles Lakers. They are now the seventh seed. And who will they be hosting in the play-in? The Los Angeles Lakers <laughs> oh, in the same <laughs> arena that they just lost to on Sunday. So that is difficult stuff. And they lost to the Lakers plenty of times this season. Yeah. Three times. And one of those was a monster in the Eden season tournament. That was by 44 points. The other ones were by double-digit losses. So overall, bad. And Zion just looked bad, I thought, in, in the game on Sunday. It was 12-8-8. Eight and eight. But on defense, he wasn't all that good, and he didn't shoot all that much, and he was turning it over. So, yes, they got Brandon Ingram back. Very good. He hasn't played for almost two months. He played on Sunday. That being said, that's just disappointment. That's I always wanted to see Zion Williamson in the playoffs for the first time, and we might not get that yeah, because they true. are in the play-in tournament. We thought that was like, you're right. We were talking like, oh, that's a lock. At least we're going to get Zion in a seven-game series. Yeah, and now they're they playing got- for four or five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now they got to beat the Lakers, and then they would be the seventh seed. And if they lose, they still get another chance against the winner of the Warriors Kings game. But that's not a that's not easy either. Though the Pelicans do own the Kings, <laughs> so if they play them, they're probably feeling good. But uh, yeah, Pelicans definitely a, a loser of this final NBA weekend. Who else you got? I think you'd throw the Suns in as a winner of the weekend, beating uh, the Timberwolves yesterday to move into sixth, where they're going to end up playing against the Timberwolves, oh. who they've beaten three times already this yes, year. Sir. Uh, I think things turned out nice. Uh, for Phoenix on the weekend. I also think a winner has to be the Celtics with the way things played out for everybody else uh, because 
they should absolutely walk to the conference finals right now. They'll play the loser of Heat versus Sixers or the Bulls Hawks winner. So, I mean, could be a tough matchup depending sure. on who loses that first game. Uh, but also, that's going to be their toughest task until they get to um, until they get to the conference mm-hmm. finals because they play the winner of the Cavs or the Magic. That should be a sweep. It'll yeah. probably be six games because of Boston, but it <laughs> should be You're a sweep. Right. But things worked out really nicely for the Celtics. All of the good teams in the Eastern Conference are on the other side of the bracket. So, like, the Knicks have to be a loser this weekend, even though they got the win, because they play either the Heat or the Sixers, then likely the Bucks if they're able to get out of their series with the Pacers, and then the Celtics to get to the finals. Like, yeah. that's a really tough path. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, you could do the opposite side of your Suns pick as a winner, the Timberwolves. Yep. All year long are flirting with the number one seed and they go into the final weekend and they drop all the way to number three Mm -hmm. and have to play a team they can't beat. (laughs) And in fact, it's even worse when you look at it against the Suns. They lose on Sunday, so that sucks. But Minnesota's worst offensive game of the season came against Phoenix. They scored 87 points. And their worst defensive game of the season, where they gave up 133 points allowed, also came against the Phoenix Suns. And Bradley Beal... He looks like a star again, sort of against this Minnesota team. And Ant looks like a scrub against Phoenix. It's really weird. I think he's averaging like 15 points per game in the games against Phoenix this Not year. Good. They've done a good job. You know, they sort of like run a lot of bodies at him. Um, you know, Cat is back. He looks rusty. Um, you know, just like Ingram. These guys coming back, it's like on one hand of like, of course we want our star guys in the lineup. But then you're like, oh, we got to we gotta sort of work them in here again. And they're rusty and conditioning and the shot maybe isn't there. The touch isn't there. But what a what a brutal final week yeah. weekend for Minnesota. Like mm-hmm. I mean, I, I can't believe it that they're suddenly may not even be favored in their series. They got home court advantage for the first time in like twenty years. Like they'll open game one of their playoff series, but not the team they they wanted. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think about the conversation this weekend of like we should allow these top seeds, you know, one, two, three, whatever, to pick their opponent? You know, we've talked about this before, but like it reared its ugly head this weekend because of some of the jockeying and like unfortunate falls for some of these teams. It's like, oh, how is... Does it feel fair, I guess, in a weird way? Do you like the idea of a, a top seed to pick their opponent, in theory? It seems weird to me uh, to have, like, a <laughs> choose-your-team extravaganza. I guess it would be some <laughs> kind of programming that we see, you know? You're, oh, we're, uh, we're the Thunder. We want to take on the Pelicans in the first it, it, round sure. or whatever they say. I think that would be cool to watch. It doesn't feel like something that happens in sports, though. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it happens in some sort of something or another some sort of league out there but that it feels like bush league to me to be quite honest like it feels like a joke uh but it's also weird that the one seed is the last team to find out who they're playing in the first round that's true that's true that is a little strange because they're waiting for these play-in games to end Mm -hmm. um yeah, you could look at that as definitely a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. They have to the poor the poor assistant coaches on these teams. Oh, they gotta crunch the tape on like four teams in the play. They don't really basically <laughs> know they're crunching hard. Yeah. yeah, the West is it, when you look at it, it's going to be tough for all those teams at the top, no matter who they play. It's going to be so, somewhat tougher. And you mentioned the Boston Celtics. Like this next month, it is a month. The first two rounds for the Boston Celtics that should be <laughs> so easy. What matters in the next month for the Boston Celtics? Not much. That you can basically just. Simulate the next month. They should just get to the conference finals. No problem. Mm-hmm. Does it matter? Does it matter who they play? I, th- I think they should take care of business no matter what. From Going from their win total, 64, the next basically just, just getting to 50 wins uh, for the New York Knicks. It's been a wild one in the Eastern Conference, but the West, it would be tougher. I think they'd all be... It all be good, and then you have an, you have a tournament to see who gets into those last two games or two teams. It would be a little different, I guess, if you're in the East and you have one through eight. The Celtics could pick a you know a bad team, mm-hmm. but uh, the West is just tough. I got another winner here. This one's a little silly, but uh, back to Boban Marjanovic. <laughs> uh, he scored 13 points in 12 minutes uh, for for the uh, for the Rockets. Playing in LA, he's a former Clipper. Um, played on a lot of teams, but former Clipper. He's a fan favorite wherever he goes. So he delighted the fans there because he purposely, at least the second one, missed two free throws to give the home crowd free chicken sandwiches. And it was amazing. And the crowd went nuts. And he's literally like, you're welcome. He's putting his finger up in the air because he missed the first one. And then he's like, oh, oh, wait, if I miss the second one, everybody you can goes see home him saying, I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. He gets the ball. This is for me. I got you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. Absolutely. Incredible. And then the broadcast, ah, oh, he gave him chicken. He's a man of the people. He's a man of the people. 
And he is. So winner of the weekend to Boba. There should be more of this. Just like uh, pander to the crowd if you're like in a blowout situation. Just give him chicken. I love it. I want to see him eating the chicken. I want to see him cashing in on it. Ooh. Interesting. He was so, there. It's almost like a prop bet. Well, he doesn't have a, t- <laughs> doesn't have a ticket stub, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the problem. Well, he may have had family there <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Use theirs. Yeah. That's a good call. He should go to Chick-fil-A for sure. He was doing a great job afterwards. <laughs> Pointing at himself, as you said. Oh, I yeah. got it. And then shooting a very nice missed shot. Yeah. It was like, good. He didn't chuck it off the rim. <laughs> yeah. He shot it with some nice rotation to hit on the left side. He's a great actor. He was great in John Wick. <laughs> he was so good with those fans. That he was, was awesome. Very funny. I, what I loved about yesterday, Sunday, we had all these games still deciding playoff seedings. So that's fun. Like, and some of them huge, obviously. You know, Pelicans, they want to win. And, and the Knicks, they probably want to win. All this. But. Amongst all that, we still had all these insane like moments going on in some of these other games that maybe didn't matter as much. I'm talking about players that never play. I mean, hell, back to the Hornets game. Poku inbounded the ball to a referee. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of weird stuff. You know, Pete Pritchard went off again. He could. Yeah. Have him you want me to hit you with on. some Ben Uzo last yeah, weekend yes, winners here? Um, all right, we'll go back to Friday. Adama Sanogo, who plays for the Chicago Bulls, went for 22 points and 20 rebounds in 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of roast beef. The rest of the season, he's played 31 minutes, has 14 points and 16 rebounds. Yeah, I love this. That's a great one. (laughs) Uh, You got to throw Gigi Jackson in the mix, went for a career-high 44 points and 12 rebounds as a 45th pick Mm -hmm. uh, in a big-time blowout loss to the Nuggets and absolutely skeets. (laughs) Love the church drumming video. This guy was incredible. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you're like, oh, this guy can play the drums or he was a saxophonist or whatever and you hear it and you're like yeah you played in high school yeah. and this guy was shredding under the <laughs> I couldn't believe this right hand was going so fast mm-hmm. uh, nice season for him though 14 a game 4 rebounds a game 43 from the field 35 from 3 like he's going to play for the Grizzlies next year yep. when they're a real team yeah. once again and then Peyton Pritchard I think is uh, the Ben Uzo of this NBA season because on Friday in a win against the Hornets, he went for 31 points and 11 assists in a win. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday against the Wizards in a win, 38 points and 12 assists for Peyton Pritchard. I looked it up. He's got one other 30 point game in his entire career. It came in the last game of last season, 30 points, 14 rebounds and 11 assists. His only triple double. Peyton Pritchard is Ben Uzo. Oh my God. (laughs) That's yeah, amazing. they were talking on during Friday's game. He sat for the entire fourth quarter, and they said, did you want to go for your new career high? He goes, I'll do that later in my career. And then he did it. Did it on Sunday. On Sunday. <laughs> That's awesome. Two days later. And he could have got even more, too. I think they, sort of, yeah. they did pull him as well. Uh, those are great. I'll give you a funny one as well from yesterday. Delano Banton, he plays for the Blazers. Uh, maybe you thought he still played for the Raps, but he's on the Blazers. Ice cold from three-point range on Sunday historically ice cold the Blazers guard shot an abysmal (laughs) 0 for 15 from behind the arc this is one game guys on Sunday no player in NBA history has attempted as many threes without making a single one during a game to make matters worse he got ejected from this game in the fourth quarter he had 17 points finished 6 of 26 shooting again 0 for 15 from deep and I looked it up because I was like this guy's chucking like crazy over his last two games Delano Banton he got up 52 shot attempts over the weekend <laughs> <laughs> and in a game where he got tossed out of one of them. So he was going out guns blazing there. I mean, and he had a, like, you know, he was getting opportunity in Portland. He had been playing okay for a couple of weeks there. But this, I mean, this, I love these results. The Ben Uzo lines, as you call them, where you're just like, what is going on? It's just pandemonium. So very funny. All right, let's pivot here, guys. Uh, 15 different seeds were decided on the final day there of the regular season. We now have the complete postseason field it's set let's show you the playoff picture there it is oh so sexy obviously we got the play-in games and we're going to get to those and we'll go through each one of those and maybe call our shots in a second um i just want to know though the ones we have locked in here or not i mean you don't need to pick a locked in one but what playoff matchup are you most excited for tass uh from from this playoff picture here I think it is the Wolves and the Suns yeah, because, yes, the Wolves have had a great season overall. They get to host a playoff series the first time in 20 years. It's kind of hard to get your head around that, <laughs> but that's the first time. But they dropped to the three seed, and now they host the Suns, who have shellacked them three times this year. We talked about it after seeing the second one because the second one was a bad one, nine days before the third one, and it looked bad. It was 18 the first time, which was just bumped up 
in garbage time. It was actually like a 25 point deficit. And then game two, they lost by double digits. Again, bumped up in garbage time. And then in game three, final day of the season, you'd think, okay, we just played them not too long ago. But in the first quarter, they got stomped. It was 44-22 after the first quarter. They turned it over 19 times in the first half. These are all blowouts. So this is a good Phoenix Suns team that goes and doubles Anthony Edwards, gets the ball out of his hands, and it's it's remarkable all three games i mean the wolves have never been within single digits in the second half in any of the games it's it's That's so strange weird. but the suns look great i know they got uh, on on the wolf side they got cat back but it's it's remarkable watching every team every guy on on that team bradley beal not only has he been good against the timberwolves this season but He's just come back flying. Last 12 games, he's been shooting 60% from three-point line. I could go even back further, but I wanted to get up to 60%. So I said 12 (laughs) games. But he's been playing really, really well. And he plays defense really hard. He's averaging a steal and a block in those last 12 games. I don't know. This team looks different. I know we saw them get smacked last week once. uh, But (laughs) against against the Wolves, it feels like they are going to steal one in minnesota at least at least steal one and it feels like game one is almost a game two just because they got smacked by phoenix so (laughs) the wolves you shouldn't you shouldn't lose a game two that just doesn't happen in the nba but i like the suns team against them (laughs) looking and watching those games they they literally just can't find scores uh the suns play d against them some some way somehow (laughs) and the bigs are are too biggy uh, for the Wolves on this team, they they just they don't get a lot from Rudy Gobert. Nurkic plays them pretty well. Yeah, that's the thing. They it's, can't it's really bad. play Nurkic off the off the floor because they've got big. I mean, they need Cat, of course, back and playing mm. and shooting well. Even Nas Reed, they need some stretch shooting there from those guys. Otherwise, the Suns, yeah, they're they're licking their chops that they got the Wolves here. They feel good against them. They've proven it at least. I mean, sometimes we look at the regular season matchup and go, ah, just throw it out. Those games happened, you know, in January. They had mm-hmm. different rosters. They The trade deadline came and gone. They've looked like a different team over the last six weeks, blah, blah, blah. But, like, these are recent games. Mm-hmm. You're right, Tass, and some high-stakes games, and they feel comfortable. So that that is a great matchup, that 3-6. Might be some ugly fourth quarters in that one. True, yeah. true. Two poor fourth quarter offenses right do you have uh, another matchup you got circled here that you're interested about well i've got it pencil circled the knicks versus whoever they play that'll be fun. i think that's gonna be good it's either gonna be the heat or the sixers yeah. getting that seven seed those are both quality teams playing against a knicks team that can at least win a first round and maybe with the we'll see what happens in the second round for them but i think that one that could go seven games depending on who it is and you know depending on health of course with Embiid if he is looking good uh after the play-in but i think for teams that are locked right now clippers versus mavs we've been looking forward to it for three straight weeks feels like a conference finalist could come out of this matchup with the way the bracket has broken so far they both had like 30 game stretches where they look like one of the three best teams in the league and then they've uh, both had stretches where they didn't look uh, as good obviously the Mavs are clicking right now but we don't know what's going on with Kawhi Leonard hasn't played since March 31st you would like to see him on the court uh, before heading into the postseason against a a hot Mavericks team but allegedly he's going to play we'll see if he's able to finish the series because that's always a question mark with Kawhi we've seen him be the best player in the series and then be gone uh, by game four so I think that one has the potential to be a classic yeah, and then any other quick thoughts on one series we haven't really talked about a lot here, Bucks pacers in the 3-6. We've obviously seen these two teams go at it mm-hmm. a couple times in this regular season. You want to talk about a one you can chuck out. All of those games happened up till January sure. 3rd. So Adrian Griffin was still the coach. The Pacers had yet to make the move for Siakam. Giannis was healthy. I don't know exactly what you can take from that, but they have played each other Intensely, and the yeah. Pacers have looked good enough um, against the Bucks that if Giannis isn't able to come back, you got to at least give the Pacers a chance to pull oh. the upset. I think. Yeah, Giannis is uh, calf there. The ultimate question here. Mm-hmm. I mean, he usually is. He's like Superman when it comes with injuries. He's usually back way sooner than you anticipate, and he usually looks pretty good. I mean, he's done it time and time again. Is my point. But yeah, if he's lingering, if he's not even out there, yeah, Pacers. I mean, they're, they're you're obviously the underdog. It's like no one's really picking them, so they get to play fast and free, and that's what they flourish at. And Halliburton, he was dominant in those early season games. Trey, like you said, the first half of the season, cooled off there. But he's like he's starting to get it going a little bit. You know, it helps when you play the Hawks and you get to put up a 150 in your sleep, mm-hmm. as they always do against them. But, yeah, I mean, I think all four of these ones locked in, they're intriguing, even if you're not looking forward to a – you know, Cavs Magic NBA TV series. I think that one could go long. I think it could. So 
Maybe we'll get a seven-game series for the first time in forever in the Eastern Conference first round. Exciting. You said it was like five years since we've had one, wasn't it? Five or six years? I think that's right. Yeah, it's a long time. Notes. Long time. Uh, just a programming note when we're talking about all these uh, playoff matchups. On Wednesday, we're going to preview and predict the three Western Conference series. 2-7, we'll know by then. We'll know who the Nuggets are playing, either the Pelicans or Lakers. 3-6 and 4-5. So we'll do the Wolf Suns, we'll do the uh, Clippers Mavericks, we'll talk them out, we'll make our predictions, and then on Thursday we'll do the same with the Eastern Conference, 2 7 3 6 4 5 because we'll know those three series, and we'll go from there, and I was so happy you brought up his name, we might as well just say it now, tomorrow's guest, ESPN's Tim Bontemps, <laughs> is joining the show to break down the postseason, we'll talk some NBA awards, we'll have a blast with Tim Bontemps, so that's tomorrow's show, that's Tuesday, and, and while we're doing it, Tass Mellis did lose <laughs> the Nut Dust Bowl. Right. My, my Wizards <laughs> lost again on the final day, but so did Tass's Pistons to the Spurs there. So you come up one game short. You got roped into this damn bet that Trey and I started when you weren't even here. And it's Trey true. had the Hornets and I had the Wizards. Yeah. And then you showed up a couple weeks later. We just gave you the Pistons. But uh, Friday, you were going to attempt to do the, uh, I don't know, a shot glass of the Nut Dust <laughs> and maybe, and maybe I don't know. Have to answer rapid fire questions or ask them. I don't know something where you got to talk. I guess after <laughs> or try to. Yeah, that's the discussion. Uh, what will happen <laughs> on, on Friday? Yes, I I got roped in. I was in a hospital while you guys <laughs> yeah. made this bet. <laughs> actually, dying from things and um, you know not wanting to put things in my mouth. And now I'm gonna have some flashbacks. I imagine I'm put some. <laughs> It's like a, the cinnamon challenge, it sure yeah, feels yeah. like, which I've hated when I've done before. I oh, you did have that done. once yeah, yeah. just for fun, just to see what all this talk is about. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't easy to swallow cinnamon. No. No. Uh, no. Your body doesn't want to. Yeah, but, yeah. but I shall say about nut dust <laughs> and whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever it is, rosemary or whatever, whatever you got, it's, it's a lot easier. It's... It's just so much more... Uh, it, the powder is just... It's, it's, it globs up everything. Yeah, it cakes up in your mouth, the cinnamon. Yeah. You don't think that'll no, be as yeah. much of an issue? No, I yeah. would agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, TBD. <laughs> yeah, Maybe it'll be fun. I don't look, know. Look, we're the first people to do this. We don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I, I hope you don't go back in the hospital, but I think you're going to be okay. I think you're going to be able to yeah. power through. Uh, yeah, if people haven't done it ever. <laughs> Like, I don't like just so. herbs in their mouth. Just just swallowing <laughs> herbs. It's because gonna be delicious. You think, huh? It's uh, gonna be a yeah, salty. Gonna it's gonna be very salty, I Very think. salty. Super yes. salty. Yes. Yeah, which but. is great. <laughs> Salt is great. Right? Uh it's better than eating cinnamon. I think. You're right. Oh yeah. It'll right. be tastier. Yeah. It'll it'll be tastier. <laughs> it won't be as dense. So T B D. Okay, that's that's Friday, but Tim Bontemps tomorrow. Oh, that'll be a good time. And then really into our playoff previews on Wednesday and Thursday. We'll be talking about the play in games that happen too. And then uh, Friday we got the drop podcast, which will include a man trying to eat a bunch of nut dust. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> because the Pistons won what they win in the end? Thirteen games? What did they get? 14? 14. 14. 14. 14. Yeah, the Wiz got to 15. Woo! Uh, all right, let's talk about those play-in games. Uh, we can move through these with some pace, but uh, we'll start uh, by showing you the schedule. Here it is. So we got the two Western Conference games first. I don't know why. That doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> it's like, ugh, what? It's something to do with Philly, right? Because is there a, there's a game going on in... Uh, is it a hockey game, maybe? Yeah, I yeah, think the schedule? Philadelphia Flyers yeah. play Tuesday night, so the Philadelphia 76ers cannot. They're but not I, allowed. But am I crazy thinking it's just, I don't know, it just feels weird that these powerhouse Western Conference playing games are going to be happening before, you know, some of these uh, East games. Just me. Just used to the East going first. I don't know why. But Lakers, Pelicans, guys, that's our first one. Uh, you know, a rematch of what we just saw on Sunday, Tass. Mm -hmm. This is the first game on Tuesday night, 7:30. I might jump on playback for that one, so keep, uh, you know, make sure you subscribe to our playback room. But uh, what do you, what do you think, and who you like uh, moving through to win that seven seed? Because it's win and you're in. I, I shall say just quickly, we haven't seen a first round Eastern Conference series go to seven games since 2017-18. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's nice. been a minute. Oh wow. We had a couple. We had a couple that season. But anyway. Yep. Lakers, Pelicans. Wow. Uh, I am. Just watching the centers, really. I know that may not sound exciting, but yesterday, Anthony Davis and the Lakers were able to get in the paint over and over and over. They outscored the Pelicans 50 to 12 in the paint in the first half. That's kind of hard to do. You think about Zion Williamson and Jonas Valanciunas, but 
they couldn't do it. I mean, they, they weren't able to move quickly and there was just drop off after drop off after drop off. And so Willie Green said, Valentinus, you're out. Larry Nance, you're in. Cody Zeller, you're in. They were playing guys going so deep. And so, yeah, uh, if you look back in the end season tournament, a seven seeded team has never not advanced. They've always advanced at some point mm. in the play, play in season right. tournament. With but I, 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 I'm scared. I'm scared. For the Pelicans, for sure, because number one, they're not a great home team. I guess that's something. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anthony Davis is going to play. He said he's going to play. Yeah. He got he left this game because Larry Nance pushed him in the back. He said he's not a dirty guy. He just pushed me in the back. All good. Uh, <laughs> and he said he'll be testing out heating pads that he could wear underneath his jersey to keep his back loose from ESPN. Interesting. Uh, and LeBron just looks great against this team. He was passing everybody 13 assists in the first half, a record for the old man. Uh, that's surprising for LeBron. <laughs> to hear LeBron's in his 21st season sometimes still gets me. Um, that, that is an amazing accomplishment. But they somehow, some way, they get the Pelicans down. And the Pelicans can't overcome deficits. If, if you look at the stats all season long, I think it's 4-18 and 18 when they get down at half. Hmm. Their record, they can't come back. It's even worse in the fourth quarter. They were literally winless a couple weeks ago if they're down in the fourth quarter to start the fourth quarter. So, I don't know. They just get into the lane, they drop off, and they're they're too quick for the bigs. Anthony Davis is, is going to have a great game. Um, so, that's a tough one. You're leaning Lakers here yeah, to move so. on. Yeah, I mean, you're going to see a lot of uh, highlights for Lakers fans, low lights for Pelicans fans of that uh, embarrassing 133-89 to uh, victory by L.A. over over the Pels in the in-season tournament semis. That started the whole, oh, Zion doesn't have a discussion. That, <laughs> that was it. Season was over at that point. They rallied, they play well, but yeah, have faltered you know, down the stretch here. And now they get the Lakers. Where are you leaning in this one? Yeah, between uh, this and the Bucks and Pacers meeting each other, I can't wait to see those in-season tournament oh, courts again. Give me those courts. You know? <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, I remember those courts. Uh, does anybody actually want to win this game? Interesting. If you, win, if you win seven, eight, guess what? You're playing the Denver Nuggets. They've beaten the Lakers nine straight times. New Orleans has had some success against Denver. They're one and two. Okay. Mm. I don't necessarily know uh, that you would tank this game to then try and play against the Warriors <laughs> versus the Kings winner. That's risky business, but you would certainly rather play against OKC. I think both of these teams would rather go against the Thunder than against the Nuggets, the defending champion who, unless you have Victor Wembanyama, seemed pretty unbeatable uh, <laughs> down the stretch. But Tass is completely right. Valanciunas may not be able to play minutes period uh in this game he can't move well enough to stick with anthony davis and then on the flip side it's like when nance is in davis runs wild hitting the glass so that's a tough matchup uh certainly for new orleans but if you lose this one you got a chance against the kings and the warriors i think both teams match up pretty well uh in that matchup but um yeah i can't imagine the lakers coming out and giving a stinker and you know limiting minutes for lebron and ad hoping to <laughs> prioritize the next game. Right. You want to win and get in, but it is a question. With Denver dropping to number two, number seven doesn't look as good. Yeah, you're right. And look, if this was like the Eastern Conference and it was like for some weird reason, you're like, hey, we prefer the eighth seed over the seventh seed. And yeah, we'll lose the first game. And then we just have to beat the Bulls or the Hawks. Okay. Yeah. But we're talking about it could be Steph Curry. Who in a one-game situation, no thank you, no, 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 I don't want anything to do with that, to then push me out of even making the playoffs. And, and look, and the Kings, you know, we'll get to that game in a second, but um, I don't think they'll be doing that, but it's a fascinating thought <laughs> experiment. And yeah, they don't want to play Denver, but Denver's in second seed. You know what they, do, they don't want? They don't want to not be in the postseason. They don't have yeah. a chance to beat Denver. So I'm leaning towards the Lakers in this one too, just because they've like, in the three wins against the Pelicans, they just crushed them. I just hope we get a close game uh, in this one. It doesn't turn into a snooze fest. All right, so we then we should, have... We should go. You want to go down to the Orleans? street? Yeah. Just down uh, the street. Well, that's like that's an eight-hour drive. Oh, okay. Quick six to seven. Quick six to seven-hour ride. It's, it's pretty a close Tuesday. for a Western Conference game. Yeah, <laughs> they, get to host a, they get to host a game here. I do expect Zion to have a bounce-back game because you look at the games where he's had poor games. And mm-hmm. this one where he was 12-8-8, eight, and eight, he was not good. He does bounce back throughout the season when he does have a poor game. So I... I talked about the Minnesota Timberwolves losing on Sunday the Minnesota, uh, to the Phoenix Suns. They feel like they will be playing a game two in their game one. This kind of feels like a game two for the, the New Orleans Pelicans. They've got to be better. Yeah. So I do want to see it. But yeah, the Lakers will not be giving up. That's absolutely the truth. Uh, but the Pelicans, 
They want to get this done. They want to be in the postseason. So it should be a great battle. Second Western Conference play-in game is the number 10 Warriors at the number 9 Kings <laughs> for Sacramento. Uh, this is a repeat of last year's seven-game first-round series that saw the Warriors prevail thanks to Steph Curry's 50-point game in Game 7 to knock out the Kings. Uh, the Warriors are going to try and make history here. We've never had a number 10 seed get into the actual postseason, like get out of the play-in and win uh, that eighth seed. But what do you think, Trey, of Warriors-Kings here, 10-9? It's in Sacramento. It's in Sacramento where Steph went for 50 yeah. <laughs> last <laughs> last season. That's a bummer. And the Kings, 5-8 and eight to end the season, which is uh, – not how you want to be going into the postseason. Obviously, they lost Herder and Monk. I guess Monk could return if they're able to extend this. Here's a silver lining for you, though, Kings fans. Kevon Looney, Kevon Looney has only played more than 20 minutes three times in 2024. Two of those were in the first week of January. He's basically not a part of the rotation for the Warriors right now. And he dominated DeMontis Sabonis last season on the glass. Like, Sabonis could not get going because Looney was the better rebounder, even though Sabonis had led the league in rebounding uh, during the season. So if Looney's not able to give the Warriors anything, I think that Sabonis can have a better game, which is something that the Kings are going to need if they're able to win this one. But I would not be super confident because the other side does have Steph Curry. Yeah. (laughs) Simple as that. The Warriors are moving the thing. They're moving the ball, and they are seem to be matching up to the Kings' offense, which is good. But without Malik Monk, that's a huge problem with this team. So Keegan Murray has to be awesome uh, as sort of the, the third guy behind Fox and Sabonis. And he has been playing well recently, but they need the offense. And then, yeah, the defense is going to be a question. Uh, just just boarding and, and playing with Trace Jackson Davis playing against him, who's been awesome uh, recently. And that's why Kevon Looney has been out of the rotation. The Kings... I don't know. I don't know if they're going to score enough against this Warriors team because the Warriors defense right now with Trace Jackson Davis playing center. And then you got Draymond Green being comfortable playing the four can take some more gambles with TJD at the back blocking shots. This Warriors team is the best version that they've been all season right here right now. So that's yeah. that's a problem. That's the weird part. They're the 10th seed in the Western Conference and they've been one of the best teams over the last like 6 weeks record-wise. The Warriors have. I mean, unfortunate for the Kings. I mean, again, they're one of these teams that were like looking good for a while and then it's completely fallen apart. Now they got to play their arch nemesis Warriors and they got to win and then maybe win another one. Uh, I think a lot of people will be leaning with these like veteran squads here led with the the old-timey superstars in LeBron and Steph Curry in these two matchups. Maybe you disagree Let's hear from you in the stream team. Uh, let's pivot to the East here. Start with uh, the number eight Heat in Philly taking on the number seven Sixers. That's Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. Philly ended the season on an eight-game win streak, and it took them from number eight in the Eastern Conference to number seven. <laughs> so they're still playing, but it's at their barn. Uh, what are you looking for in this one? <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to Joel Embiid playing against this Heat team, period. The, he sat the last game here for the Sixers to get rest, but he has looked pretty good uh, since coming back from the knee injury. Well, uh, he still gets his numbers. Yeah, uh, has he look, I guess pretty good. Def- yeah, yeah, yeah. The defense I feel is like limited. Embiid never looks good. <laughs> That's right. Even when he's playing well, he <laughs> falls down true. a lot. He looks very tired. <laughs> yeah, he's tired. Yeah. There's no doubt. His defense is lacking. The yeah. Sixers' defense is lacking, and that's why it was surprising to me that they'd sit him in the last game because he hasn't been his best self. And you'd think he'd want to get into a flow before the mm. postseason. Uh, but I guess they thought that there was a chance they were playing Wednesday. Uh, so they wanted to get him as much rest yeah. as possible because he's not playing Tuesday, which I'm okay with. They're playing hockey on Tuesday. <laughs> I still think that's a pretty yeah, that's a pretty good opening for Wednesday night, Philly and Miami, because who who are we getting from the Miami Heat team? That, that's a, a fair question. Like what version of this team yeah. are we getting? Should we be scared of them like everybody was, you know, a, a, after seeing what they did last year? I don't know. I, I I don't know. They will move the ball, but Jimmy hasn't looked great either, Agreed. and so that's yeah. a worry. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yes, Embiid is knee is a problem, but Jimmy just doesn't look great game in game out right now. The good thing for the Sixers, they're thirty and seven in games where Embiid and Maxi play together. That's a damn good record, and they should be in the lineup there on Wednesday night. But yeah, what do you think about the the Heat here? Are you scared it all again? They're gonna do it again? They're gonna fool us once again, or is that done? They lost their first play-in game last year. Yeah. Got crushed on the True. glass by the Atlanta Hawks, and then were getting beat by the Bulls before Max Struess went crazy to actually get them in <laughs> to the eighth point. seed. So I think that neither team is feeling any pressure 
in the 8-7 game because they have to be confident against both the Bulls <laughs> and the Hawks coming out of the 9-10 game. Like, <laughs> these teams have almost 10 more wins than those teams sitting there in yeah. the 9-10. Um, I'm excited to see Jimmy Butler versus Tobias Harris again. He loves playing against that guy. <laughs> when Miami bounced Philadelphia in the 2022 playoffs, that's when Jimmy's walking down the hallway saying, Tobias Harris over me? <laughs> After he had 32-8-4 in Philadelphia to bounce him in game six. So that's going to be fun to watch, but this is the first chance we're going to get to see if Jimmy Butler can become playoff Jimmy again. He was awesome in the play-in tournament and the first round last year, and then he sprained his ankle against the Knicks and kind of coasted on the reputation of playoff Jimmy from the first couple of rounds, but they're going to need him uh, if they're going to be able to take down this Sixers team who at least is getting better. Like, I agree, Embiid looks good, not great, but he should with a little bit more time off with some more games under his belt get better as the postseason goes on so the time to beat philadelphia is right away so miami shouldn't mess around in this one and they should rebound yeah that and to go to that series that you're talking about sixers heat that was the one that bam did a pretty damn good job on uh joel Embiid, at least as well as you can do one-on-one so he's got to be huge for them to to win this game in philly there on wednesday night and then the final game it's Trey Kirby's Chicago Bulls. They'll be hosting the Atlanta Hawks. Kaka, that's the 10-9 matchup, 9:30. Saving the best for last when it comes to the playing tournament. Uh, the Bulls won the season series 2-1. Uh, the only game Atlanta won was oddly without Trey Young, but he is here. Um, what, what do you expect here? Do we know the status of DeRozan's daughter? Will she <laughs> be she in attendance? School? Yeah. I guess she wouldn't have school at 9.30, right? It's a late one, though. It is late. It's a late one. Is she going to go to school on Thursday afternoon? <laughs> I don't know. I feel confident because uh, the Hawks had Vic Krejci on a two-way contract, and they didn't convert him to a regular contract, so he can't play in the postseason. In the one game the Hawks beat the Bulls, Vic Krejci went 6-for-6 six six from three. What was? It's what's over. the decision <laughs> behind this? This is fascinating. Y- yeah, but even gotta that. Say, gotta it? save 30000 bucks. Or whatever it is. I mean, it can't be a lot. I know. That's yeah. It's a bizarre, very move, weird. Uh, that yeah, this guy was a two-way and they didn't convert it, so he won't be on the Hawks roster here. Somehow, this is going to come down to Demar Derozan and Dejounte Murray taking mid-range jumpers. <laughs> Who makes more in the fourth <laughs> quarter? This is going to be a five-point game in the fourth quarter somehow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where are you? Leaving? You're right. You're right. It's going to come down to being a close game. That's for sure. And Trey will be taking those shots and maybe making those shots. Where am I leaning? I don't know. I'll be leaning it towards watching it on playback. That's for sure. Oh, wow. Yeah, come on. This is it. This is it. When we watched the uh, Bulls-Raptors play-in game, we did monstrous numbers <laughs> no, trying to play back. Got to do it again. Be more pumped. This is, it is so wild to see a 39 versus a 36 win team here in the play-in tournament. The Western Conference seeds, like if, if you got into it, like the Pelicans and all that, uh, in the play-in tournament, they would be the literally be up in the three seed yeah, in the yeah. Western Co- Home and court East, in the East. I should say, that's it's wild. Um, well, do you think with teams if they're so far back from you know the six seed or whatever, or I guess eight seed, however you want to put it, that we shouldn't even have these games <laughs> like they used to do the first time they did this when we were in the bubble? Yeah, wasn't that what right, happened? Right. You had to be yeah. like within. What was it? What was it like five or Four six games or something yeah, like something that? Like yeah, that. Uh, and then you triggered the game. Uh, you think all of this is a waste of time? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the East a little bit. Yeah, I think both teams are going to get popped in the first round. We know whoever they're playing, if they're playing, anybody. Oh, you think either of these teams are going to be in? Well, it's, it's, it's possible. There's a chance. We it's saw, possible. as Trey brought up with uh, Jimmy Butler, lost last year, game one, got into, became became a team that went to the freaking finals. Yeah. I will say you know, the Bulls are better than a, a 39-win team. They played pretty freaking hard this year. Yeah, they're more like a 41-win team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least. I mean, if Zach Levine's playing all season long, like they got... Anyways, no, they'd be they worse played hard. <laughs> then they'd be a 30 win team. But uh, the Hawks, I don't know. I don't know about the Hawks. That's why it's fun. This could be a team that <laughs> so could go to overtime. It could go to double overtime. Who knows? So, that's wow. a great point. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go bet, go bet on that. That's a good bet. This game's going to overtime. <laughs> yeah. Bulls Hawks there on Wednesday night. All right. Let's move to some other news. According to Shams, former Bucks championship head coach Mike Budenholzer, Kings assistant Jordy Fernandez, and Suns assistant Kevin Young are among the finalists for the Brooklyn Nets coaching job. I guess Nets owner Josiah is holding in-person finalist meetings with all three. There's some reports that he's meeting a bunch of other people as well, but uh, a final decision decision is looming 
in the near future. That's from Shams at the Athletic. Uh, Boonholzer is the is the name that's got everybody intrigued here. Um, Trey, by far the most accomplished, you know, coaching prospect available for the Nets. What do you what do you think about that? Oh, I think it's easy. Interesting, but uh, I don't think the Nets should hire Mike Budenholzer. I don't think he's the right coach for them. He took over a 44-win Hawks team. They became a conference finalist. Took a 44-win Bucks team. They become an NBA championship. Budenholzer hasn't done, like, a development thing. And I don't think the Nets are in development mode. Or I don't think the Nets are in, like, we're trying to make a conference finals mode. They're going to be in for a long rebuild here, I do believe. But Sean Marks and Mike Budenholzer have... A connection from their yep. time with the Spurs. I think uh, Marks was there for like three years plus a season as an exec when Budenholzer was still coaching with Pop. And then Bud, I guess, has coached Dennis Schroeder in Atlanta here. <laughs> Dennis Schroeder plays for the Nets. I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 So there's a connection. But I think they should hire an assistant because I think this is going to be a thing that doesn't get fixed in a year. Like, they're not – the Nets don't need to be a 41, 42-win team next season. They need to continue to be a bad team and trade – Mikhail Bridges and get some picks back and then eventually they'll have these sun pick these sons picks further down the line but I think if they do hire Mike Budenholzer it kind of gives you a look into what they're planning for this summer well they'll probably try and make a trade try and bring in veterans try to be a winning team rather than go the other way and build from the bottom which I I personally think they should do I think they only hire Budenholzer if they're trying to make a run for the playoffs next year which seems unlikely to me and so if they do hire him you think that'll sort of tip their hand of what they'll be Mm -hmm. doing in the offseason that's interesting what do you think yeah I totally agree that Budenholzer is there because they have faith number one in the roster they currently have with Mikel Bridges and Cam Johnson as sort of their leaders on this team and potentially doing more around them. But you, tra- if you go and go get a, a Kevin Young, who was supposed to take over the Phoenix Suns uh, last season, but that didn't happen. Well, not supposed to, but there was hot rumors that he'd be the head coaching uh, p- pick. But Frank Vogel got the job there. Matt Ishbia went you know, with the older guy rather than a guy who can probably develop players. As you said, Kevin Young and Jordy Fernandez are probably that type of coach. So really, it's yeah, the direction that they're choosing. You know, current, now, do it. And it, it is odd because the Nets you know, were like a 500-ish team after trading Kevin Durant, and they should be better. But uh, I don't know. I don't even know how much Mikel Bridges really, <laughs> really believes in this team. And, and the structure that they have. It's just so odd there. He goes and shakes hands with his former Villanova Knicks players all the time, as he did on Friday. I, I don't know if he's going to be there. But if they do get Budenholzer, then they are absolutely trying to win with Bridges and Johnson and the same type of guys. Since becoming the Nets GM in 2016, Sean Marks has hired Kenny Atkinson, Steve Nash, and then Jacques Vaughn to the full-time coaching jobs. Vaughn let go in February, or they dismissed him. That's when Kevin Ollie took over. I guess he is not getting a chance uh, <laughs> to become the full-time head coach. Again, those were Shams' three names. There's some other reports from Nets Daily, I know, saying oh, there's a lot of other uh, people that Josiah is meeting with. But we'll see if they go with Bud as their guy or one of these assistants. You know, I'm a big fan of Jordy Fernandez. Can't wait to see him as a head coach one day. It'll be some spot. Will it be in Brooklyn? We'll find out. It'll be in Paris <laughs> this year. Right. That's right. Canada. Uh, all right. Before we go, let's get to Tweet of the Night. Mm, tweet of the Night. Wow. Twitter. Before I get to the tweets, let me set the table. The 76ers unveiled a statue in Allen Iverson's honor along Legends Walk outside the team's practice facility in Camden on Friday afternoon. The statue shows off AI's signature crossover there, but when it was unveiled to the public, most people had just one thought. Why is it so damn small? And Twitter had a field day with this, one of my favorites, uh, at NBA Paint. What is this, a statue for ants? (laughs) Old Zoolander reference there, great Photoshop. And then uh, Jasmine Watkins uh, tweeted, and this was very timely with other things going on in the world, uh, Drake Diss, you know, with the handshake with the Sixer statue. Can't tell if it's AI. (laughs) That was the the rumor this weekend, is the Drake Diss back to Kendrick, AI. And uh, you got to squint to see the Sixer statue. Now, all the statues outside of the Sixers practice facility, they're all similar small size. I mean, they're all around the same size. Now, maybe Iverson's looks a little smaller because he's like crouched over doing mm-hmm. the crossover, but generally they're all the same. 
So, you know, once people started to learn that, it was like, okay, maybe it's like, because people at first were like literally offended. <laughs> like, this is the, one of the greatest players in your franchise history. You gave him a statue. You gave him a statue like four to three How could you give him a statue that's smaller than the Rocky statue? <laughs> yeah. He's not even real. That's <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> and the Rocky statue is quite big. It's humongous. It's gigantic. So maybe they have a point. I also love that it's outside the practice facility. Allen Iverson? Practice? Pretty funny. Oh, uh, it's amazing. They don't um, own their arena, I don't think, right? Yeah, is that the thing? Yeah. 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 So. Uh, anyway, a lot of funny tweets. You know, a lot of people saying they, uh, who was it? Little Bow Wow, Calvin Cambridge or whatever in that movie with AI. <laughs> that it looks like him more than it looks like Iverson. There's a million tweets about this. Like but, Mike. Yeah. yeah. Watch like, on my honeymoon. Like Mike. That's what it was. Um, bonus tweet of the night, though. O.H. Hussey. We've been burning this Jason Tatum prayer candle every game all season long, and I ordered a new one for the playoffs. They sent me the wrong Tatum. (laughs) This just made me laugh. We have a a sexy St. Jeff Probst uh, candle that we burn on uh, No Buffs, our Survivor podcast. Very similar to these. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll see how this goes. I mean, we're going to know if they somehow have a spectacular flame out, pun intended, uh, in the postseason. It's because this wrong candle didn't get the Jason, got the Channing. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, who's the number one Tatum these days? I think it's Jason. I think, I think it's Jason. Yeah, I think yes. Channing Tatum, has he gone, it's gone a little quiet for him, is what you think? Well, he did another Magic Mike with uh, Salma Hayek, I know, is in it. Oh, he's still making those. Yeah, that was Magic Mike's last dance, but it wasn't as big of a hit. <laughs> last uh, dance. Right, like it's not, he's not on top of the world like he was in the 21 Jump Street days. <laughs> I think he's in a new movie called Fly Me to the Moon, is this right? He's, he seems to be uh, tweeting about it. So that's what Channing's up to. Um, but anyway, it's very funny. Wrong candle. I Just know. ask for a Tatum. Oh, there's our sexy St. Jeff. Great hey, work, Jeff. JD. Oh, King Cake Baby, too. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> Any thoughts on the AI statue or Tatum well, candles? Uh, well, yeah. T- Magic Mike, you know, it had its day. The first one, killed it. That was he good. killed it. Magic like Mike. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of movies. A lot of Put movie references. A lot of movie references. What was better, Magic Mike or Like Mike? Magic Mike. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good movie. Yeah. Uh, second one. You know. Hey, Magic Mike's Last Dance isn't bad. You've seen it too? Yeah. That's I mean, amazing. I've seen, I've You've seen, seen the trilogy? I've seen the trilogy. Holy Holy shit. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's what we should do for our uh, film <laughs> session this summer. So, yeah, the second one was Magic Mike XXL. Mm. Bigger. Sexier. Bigger. bigger. <laughs> Everything was bigger. <laughs> I think I had Diesel's in that one. Kevin Nash. I was seeing the first one. I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, oh, Matt, yeah, that Matt, does sound familiar. Matt Bomer, not Matt Boner, was also in that movie. Oh. <laughs> Interesting stuff. Uh, okay, we'll call it there. We'll call it there. Let us know what was better. Magic Mike or like Mike. We'll get the poll going. Uh, fun show. Thanks for joining us live here on YouTube. Hit the like button, subscribe. Podcast listeners, do us a solid. Leave your boys a five-star rating and review. Big guest tomorrow, ESPN's Tim Bontemps. Good times. Oh, my God. Tim, good, good times. times. We're going right. to ask him which is his favorite movie, like Mike or Magic <laughs> Mike. First question. Uh, we'll get into, obviously, his thoughts on the postseason and how that all shook out there over the weekend. Awards talk. You know this guy loves a straw poll, so we'll get into the MVP race and all the other stuff. There's you know, no shortage of things we can talk to Tim Bontemps about. So very excited about that. That's tomorrow live at 10 a.m. Eastern. And then, yeah, playoff previews and predictions. We really lean into them starting on Wednesday and then Thursday, and then we'll have the drop on Friday. Nut dust will be had, consumed. What a week. What a week. I mean, I don't usually set up the week for you like that, but had to this week. And then we got the playoffs starting on Saturday and Sunday. Can't wait. So until then, Clipper Bros. You heard it here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. I got to give a shout out here. Shout out to the top tier North team. They won the IEM Invitational up in Canada. Way to go, Kipton. Way to get it done. Yeah, way to go. Embrace the day, people.